Hello and praise the Lord. I want to believe God has kept you and that you are fine in the name of Jesus. Welcome to today's program about the heart of worship. Um, God is going to lift us high and I believe that you are going to be blessed even through this program. Today on the heart of worship we want to look at the topic created for worship. I've called it created for worship in the name of Jesus. Let's pray Father in Jesus name we thank you because of uh, today's program today because of the viewers as we even share through this program may you speak to us in Jesus mighty name we pray amen and so on to welcome you again <coughs> uh, to today's program uh, we are going to look at created for worship the reason God created us the reason God saved us the reason God delivered us the reason God has chosen us is that we may worship him because this is his delight I will read in the book of Exodus chapter number 3 and from verse 7 to 10 and then we'll also later read in the book of 1st Peter 2 9 and the Bible says Exodus uh, chapter number 3 verse 7 to 10 the Bible says and the Lord said I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for I know their sorrows and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land and unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Praise the Lord. This is Moses. Uh, God is charging him to go and deliver the children of Israel who are under captivity, who are in bondage in Egypt. And the Bible says that God heard their cry. He saw their affliction and he saw the oppression with which they were being oppressed by their taskmasters, the Egyptians. He also saw uh, them being held captive by the Egyptians. And he says that I have come so that I may deliver you out of the hand of the Egyptians. I have come so that I may deliver you from the hand of your oppressor. I have come so that I may deliver you from the hand of your enemy so that I may bring you out of distress that I may bring you out of sorrows that I may bring you out of trouble that I may bring you out of much distress and deliver you unto a good land and a large place a land flowing with milk and with honey definitely this is good news uh, because de uh, there is deliverance, there is freedom, there is a new uh, promotion to a place that is large, to, from a place that is small. And when God is doing all this, he's doing it with the reason that the children of Israel may have a free space to worship him. Because remember, even in Egypt, they were forced to worship the, uh, the gods of the Egyptians and they could not worship the one true God. When you read in 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10, the Bible says, but you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are a peculiar people 
that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light god has called us from darkness into his marvelous light that we may proclaim his praises that we may show forth his praises we are a peculiar people we are a people when we are called by god when we are delivered and saved we are now a different lot of people we are a peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him that called us verse 10 says which in time past were not a people but now are the people of god initially the devil had made us his people he had made us his own he had deceived us we didn't have the knowledge of this true god that deserves worship but god delivered us and the bible says that you are now my people god has made us his own people with a reason he says which had not obtained mercy but now you have obtained mercy by his mercies we have obtained mercy we are uh, we didn't qualify to be called his people but because of his mercies he has made us his people he has made us his children he has made us his own and so that we may proclaim his praises we were a nobody without jesus and actually when you have no jesus you are a nobody you have no name okay there is no much that can be um, admired from you because you don't have jesus when we lacked jesus time passed when we were in sin we were useless we we, we were hopeless but when jesus died on the cross he he changed our lives he started packaging us for a new task a new assignment and he made us his own people uh, a royal priesthood a peculiar people that we may proclaim his praises and so the reason we exist the reason that god has saved us and called us is that we may declare his praises that we may worship him that we may glorify him praise the lord and so the children of israel while in captivity could not worship god they were under a lot of affliction and oppression because of their taskmasters they suffered a lot under their oppression under their arm of oppression praise the lord when you are in captivity when you are in bondage and when you are at the mercy of your of your master when you are a slave you have no freedom of your own and that's why it's not possible for you to worship god while under bondage while in captivity until god breaks the bondage and sets you free to worship him is when you can worship him the children of israel cried to god the, and, and, and God heard their cry. Praise the Lord. We have a God who hears us when we cry. We have a God who can deliver us. He, he, he can break away um, the, the, the chain of the evil one. We have a God who hears and answers us. God, the way he responded to the children of Israel by delivering them from the hand of the oppressor, and from the bondage of the egyptians he still can be able to deliver us praise the lord the reason why god wants to deliver you the reason why god why god wants to make you free from the hand of the devil is that you may be in a position to worship him that you may be in a position to glorify him that you may be in a position to uh, proclaim his praises that's why he wants to he wants to take you out of darkness to his marvelous light god desires that you are in his marvelous light he desires that you don't um, um 
and rot in darkness okay he doesn't want you to be captive in the dark he wants you in the light and so i want to appeal to you today that if you have not given your life to jesus consider giving your life to jesus because that is what god desires from you that you may be able to worship him that you may be able to live for him praise the lord so god delivers the children of israel from the worship of foreign gods from the oppression and the hand of the evil one for the sole purpose of worshiping him in second kings chapter number 17 and verse 36 the bible says but the lord who brought you out of the land of egypt with great power and with an outstretched arm him shall you fear and him shall you worship and to him shall you do sacrifice this is the word to the children of israel that this god who delivered you from the hand of the egyptians he you owe him your worship you owe him your worship him alone you will you will worship remember when he delivered them from the hand of the egyptians he did it with great power and with an outstretched arm when he divided um, 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 the red sea so that the children of israel could walk on a dry land and the the, the egyptians could drown into the water he, God was doing so to show them that he is a powerful God. He is not like the gods of the Egyptians. The God who is looking for your worship, that we need to worship, that we need to sacrifice unto, is a powerful God. Praise the Lord. And the Lord, the, the, the Bible says, him alone you shall sacrifice. God wants you to worship him that to, you may sacrifice to him but the first thing he wants to do first is to set you free to deliver you so that you are not hindered by any reason or by any force not to worship so the reason god delivered you and saved you just like he did to the children of israel was that you may worship him something to note here is that an afflicted soul cannot worship god because of the of the much pain because of the pain an afflicted soul cannot worship god a disturbed man cannot worship god because of the struggles and the cares of this world it is not possible to worship god if you are not settled if you are not um, con um focused and contented in god and delivered and freed from any baggage it's not easy to worship God. A dissatisfied soul cannot worship because it lacks fulfillment. And you know, that's why God told the children of Israel, uh, where I'm taking you is a large place. It's a place of um, uh, freedom. It's a large place. Large place, a symbol of freedom. I'm, I'm taking you to a large place. Praise the Lord. I'm taking you to a good land flowing with honey and with milk, a symbol of satisfaction and fulfillment. Praise the Lord. God wants to satisfy you. The Bible says that he may satisfy you early in the morning. The Lord wants to satisfy you that you may have a reason to worship him. He wants to make your life better. In other words, God wants to make you better so that you may see who he is and be able to worship him may the lord hear your cry you know you may be facing a lot of opposition you may be in a situation where you are but crying to god and you know every time you come before god even instead of worshiping him you just cry to him because the cry of your heart is too much it's too loud praise the lord you have so much to cry about you have so much to complain about because trouble is surrounding you problems are the order of the day you know you have nothing that you can look at and say surely god has done in my life 
And God wants to free you from all these cares of this world. That you may have a time to worship him. Praise the Lord. So may the Lord hear your cry. So that when you come before him, you cry no more. That you just have to worship him and exalt his name. May he take away your struggles. May he take away your sorrows. May he change your name. May he give and put a new song on your mouth that you may be able to worship him. May he take you to a large place that you may have a reason to bless his name. Praise the Lord. David said this in Psalms chapter number 40 and from verse number 1 to 3. The Bible says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me. As we wait patiently on him, he listens. He pays attention. He listens to us. And the Bible says, he heard my cry. David says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined unto me and he heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. I don't know where you are now. You may be in a horrible pit. You may be in a place of, of, of shame. You may be in a place uh, of, of too much struggle. In a place where there is too much uh, sorrow. But God is able to take you out of that situation. And out of the miry clay. And has set my feet upon the rock and established my goings. May the Lord take you out of that horrible situation in the name of Jesus. May he uh, bring you out of the miry clay. May he set your feet upon the rock that you may be stable. That you may not slip into any kind of confusion. And may he establish your goings. And the Bible says, and he has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Praise the Lord. May he put a new song in your mouth. You know, may he change your cry. Okay. May he wipe away your tears that he may make you somebody that can see hope that can have hope so may he bring hope in your life in the name of jesus now the reason you need a new song in your mouth is so that you may sing to him a new song that you may worship him that you may praise him hello so that you don't have complaints in your mouth may he put a new song in your mouth that every time you open your mouth you worship god that every time you open your mouth, you praise him. That every time you open your mouth, you give him glory. Hallelujah. May he take away bitterness out of your mouth. May he take away uh, resentment out of your mouth. May he take away discouragement out of your mouth. May he take away failure out of your mouth. And may he put a new song. May he put a new song that you may be able to sing a new song to God that you may see a new dimension of God you know the reason why most of us are unable to worship God is because we don't have a new dimension of God we don't have a new song we have no reason why we should worship him the Lord has made us his people who once were not a people we were not a people. We didn't have mercy. But now we have received mercy. Remember the Bible says this same God is able to lift a beggar from an ship until he occupies together with the princes, even with the princes of his people. He is the God who lifts people from grass to grace. He is a, a God who makes people from a nobody to somebody. May he transform your state right now in the name of Jesus that you may be somebody even in his presence and in the presence of the multitude. May he make you uh, make something big and better out of your life that people may see and hear that may that people may see and fear 
and even put the trust in God. Praise the Lord. May He turn around your situation and your circumstance, and that people may add, may may witness and be a testimony of what God can do. That they may worship you, that they may fear and trust in Him. That's the new song that we are talking about. And so we need to be um, to rise to this occasion where we are praising Him, we are glorifying Him. We are um, exalting him. We are exalting him. We are glorifying him. And because he has called us out of darkness, we have a duty to proclaim his praises, um, to show forth the power, to show forth the glory, to show forth um, the, 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 um, his marvelous light that we are worshippers. Praise the Lord. You know, while we were still under bondage of sin and the oppression of the devil, we could not do anything. And that's the Bible. That's what the Bible says. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us that we may receive the gift of salvation. All this was costly. It was costly for God to release his only begotten son that he may remove us from the miry clay that he may remove us from the sin and the bondage that could not allow us to worship God. In other words, what God was looking for in us, in man, is the soul that can worship him. A soul that can connect to him in worship. A soul that can connect to him in true fellowship praise the Lord and that's the reason why God has delivered us he has broken the yoke of the enemy that we may worship him we are called to worship God hallelujah and that's why the devil cannot defeat you because God's agenda is bigger than the retaliations of the enemy the agenda of God is that we may worship him and as we worship him he takes dominion when we worship him he takes control when we worship him he takes over and when god takes over he he he, uh, he manifests his character there's nothing beautiful as god manifesting his character in our lives praise the lord this is what we need this is what we require. We need the presence of God. We need the glory of God. We need the power of God. We need the direction of God. When God takes over, he directs us. He empowers us. We become as powerful. And that's why the enemy has no way. He has no option but to bow. Because the God that has delivered us to worship him is a powerful God. The way he delivered the children of Israel with an outstretched arm and with great power, with great power and authority, he finished the troops of the Egyptians. He killed and um, uh, dismantled their chariots because of the safety and the salvation of the children of Israel. He completely, he ensured the enemy is crushed completely to allow the children of Israel worship him freely. Praise the Lord. Today I pray that, gee, that God will crush the enemy completely for you. That you may be able to worship him. That, the, that God will thrash and dismantle the chariots of the enemy that you may be freed to worship him it doesn't matter the background where you come from it doesn't matter whether you come from the devil's den himself the moment god sets you free the bible says and whom the son sets free is free indeed that when god sets you free he gives you the liberty. He gives you the liberty. He takes control. He takes over. And 
you become the agenda of God. If you have been truly born again, you are free to worship. You have a duty to worship. Many people are struggling today to worship because they are still under the bondage of the enemy. They are still yoked with the devil. They are still under the yoke of the evil one. And that's why they struggle to worship. People are struggling to even serve God. People are struggling to follow God because they are still under the bondage. And this is my prayer for you tonight that God will break that bondage. That he may set you free to worship him. That you will not struggle to worship God. Hallelujah. That you will not struggle to do the will of God. You will not struggle to praise him because he is part of you. Because the things that he is known of doing are well known to you. Because you are a witness of the miracle of God. You are a witness of the salvation. You are a witness of the gift of salvation. You are a witness that God can heal. He's a healer because he has done it to you. And so may God manifest himself to you even in the situation that you are in. That you may know him in another dimension that will give you a reason to worship him. Praise the Lord. That he may make himself known to you in a dimension you didn't know. That you may have a reason to worship him. That you may have a reason to bless his name. Hallelujah. It is him that heals your diseases. It is him that sets you free. Psalms 103. The Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. He who heals all your diseases. He who, um, who satisfies your soul. It is the Lord who satisfies our soul. It is him that heals us. It is him that delivers us. It is him that makes us uh, free to worship him. May the Lord heal you. May the Lord deliver you. May the Lord satisfy you that you may have a reason to worship him. That you may have a reason to bless his name. May he break that bondage and that yoke in your life that is holding you back. That you may be able to worship him truly. That you may be able to worship him in spirit and in truth without struggle, without compulsion, and without convincing words. May the Lord bless you. I want to believe God has spoken to you and that you have uh, been challenged to worship God, to make a point to be freed, to worship him and to bless his name and glory will go back unto him. Until next time in our next program, God bless you and be with you until we meet again. Shalom and bye-bye.